on this episode of Path to Performance, presented by Castrol Edge. A car with this amount of horsepower, I think it's a must to add a full roll cage. I always like to see things be farther along, but when it gets here, we'll put a crew of guys on it, we'll get it banged out. The field's getting stronger and stronger as the year moves along. Does it scare me? No, not really. I would say our car is the ultimate performance car. Last time when you guys were here, we were finishing up the chassis fabrication and we cut it off the chassis table for the first time. From that point forward, we started doing the sheet metal, doing the floors, mocking up the drivetrain, trans tunnel, exhaust. Firewall has been welded in and shaped. They have to do a little recess pocket around the back of the supercharger to, for some clearance issues. Drivetrain wise, we chose a LT4 with a Magnuson supercharger six-speed transmission and they'll have AP racing brakes, forge line wheels, the ultimate proven performance package that we've done. I think a car with this amount of horsepower and the capabilities, I think it's a, it's a must in our eyes to add a, a full roll cage. You know, this car will be capable of doing, you know, 170 miles an hour plus. So in case of an accident, safety, number one, but also it really adds to the performance of and the rigidity of the car. So we're fitting up the halo bar right now. It comes to the main hoop, sweeps up, up by the sun visors, which will then uh, connect down through the dash. So now we got it all bent up. We need to go ahead and uh, notch the tubing contour of the main hoop and uh, get ready to tack it in, then we'll build a A-pillar bars. All right, let's notch it up. When we uh, built the chassis, the Chevy 2 has a very narrow track width, and the narrowest we could go on the rear suspension was a certain dimension, and with the amount of tire that we want to fit on the car, it's going to require a little bit of uh, flaring on the quarter panels to make it all fit properly. I'm, I'm getting a little anxious to get it back here so we can get going on it. Uh, but I'm excited for Paul. I mean, uh, you know, I know he has a sweet spot for those cars. He always has. Uh, there's just no room to package stuff on those cars. They're just, they're not the best and easiest car to work on. Let's see what Jesse and Jeff are doing down in Alabama at Greening Auto. On the uh, 61 Biscayne, where we were from the last time, we've gotten the side trim made and uh, then we refined a whole lot more on all the sheet metal work up under the front inner fenders and so forth, the engine bay. Got that all kind of settled, some of the plumbing done on it. Now we're ready to start the process of getting it prepped for all the finishes to go on it. And then after that, we can do the final assembly. On this particular build, we're gonna pull the engine out. We're gonna make some bracing off of the engine to hold and support the turbos outside of the car so that we could send it down to Don Hardy and let him actually run the engine on the dyno that he's building for us with the turbos. That engine dynoing will relate to the rest of the performance of the car in the sense that that'll kind of all be dialed in. We'll know exactly what it's capable of before it's even in the car. And so that'll help us tune and adjust whatever we need to behind all of it, you know, to, to get some really good performance out of the thing while driving it. We're hoping the performance on this darn thing is pretty strong. So around six to eight hundred horsepower is what we're looking for. But I, I know the performance is going to probably outshine some of those uh, supercharged LT4 motors. So let's hope these twin turbos will do their job and push this big old car past, past the other boys. The particular wheels that we have designed are a set of wheels that Eric Brockmeyer and I kind of come up with. We plunge through the internet a little bit looking at old late 50s uh, concept cars. I think once the paint work is all done on them and the detail work on them, it's, it's going to be a, a probably one of my favorites. It's, it's a pretty cool looking reel. Take a look at what Paul and Dutch boys are doing to get the performance to the ground on the Nova. Let's see how it fits, Rob. Nice recess in the firewall. There she is, that's home. They had to do the recess in the firewall 
just also to get the engine placed back for weight distribution. But these Chevy 2s don't have the core sports right here. So there's not a, room, a lot of room for the cooling stack. And so we have a big radiator, fans, intercooler, AC condenser. So that'll give us some more room to work in this area as well. On this LT4, we went with the Magnuson 2650. And we also have plates in here to do port injection. So we'll add another eight fuel injectors to, so we won't run out of fuel. So with this on E85, should make over a thousand horsepower pretty easy. This car will definitely have the most horsepower of any of them in the group. Now to see how Greening Auto is doing on the body of the Biscayne. One of the next steps is going to be blowing the car all apart, getting it down to its bare bone pieces, so forth. All the metal is bare. What we'll do with that is we'll prep that metal. We'll clean the oil that we have on it to keep it from rusting while in bare metal here. And then we'll sand the part and then we will put a chemical etch on it that we're using. It's just a black primer that actually seals the metal, and then we can start doing any filler work or primer work on top of that. On this particular setup, we're doing twin turbos over a single turbo application, and uh, really and truly, the only reason in this one is aesthetics for us. So, I mean, we're gonna get power out of it. I love the symmetry that's being done in the engine bay and the way we've got it laid out and they're amazingly built and the performance that we get out of those things are incredible. The timeline is still going to be tight for us uh, being that we're I think maybe one of the only shops that's doing a full car of this caliber from bare metal to paint. I always like to see things be farther along you know, I think they do have, you know, a few months worth of work, of fab work yet, maybe a little longer. In regards to the timeline of the car, of us completing it, we're not as comfortable if I was a couple months ago, but that's okay, that's normal. I think of the cars that are being built in the group, I would say our car is the ultimate performance car. The field's getting stronger and stronger as the year moves along. I mean, you can still compete against those cars for sure. We've been fortunate enough to win a few times, and but, it's uh, at the end of the day, you just bring what you got and do the best you can and, and enjoy it. Wow, Mavis, that looks pretty good. Thanks, Dad. I'm going to start my own business called BBM, built by Mavis. Oh, really? That's almost as original as Troy's shop name. Troy who? 